All right, today I'm going to show you how to light a scene in Unreal 5. I'm using a project that I did in Unreal 4.27 with one of my clients, Ultra Pro Entertainment, and we're going to revisit that, and I'll show you how I would adjust that project in Unreal 5. So, let's get this. All right, we are in one of the scenes, and I converted as much as I could into Unreal 5. Now, I will mention that a lot of these assets were built for Unreal 4.27, so... Whenever you take a project that is from an older version into a newer version of software, there's definitely going to be some discrepancies, some things that are missing, etc., etc. This isn't a final output. This is more of an experiment on my end, and I want to show you the process of how I would relight it and see if it looks any better than the original that was done in 4.27. So, in our scene, we have a skylight, we have a directional light, we have some fog, we have a other stuff, a sphere, some global processing, etc. We're just going to delete all of this. Get rid of it. Goodbye. Yes. And it's dark. It's black. So we need to add a couple things. So in my place actors panel, now if you don't see this in Unreal 5, if you click on create and scroll down to the place actors panel, you'll have this or generally speaking your browser will kind of look like this where you'll see all this stuff uh you'll see your viewport sort of just super big create place actors panel so now we need to add our first light and that's going to be our directional light so directional light boop drop it into the scene and hey let there be light so i'm just going to put this where all of my action is my um my main scene for the little promo that i worked on and i'm gonna just move this around just try and get where i want the light to be so yeah and what i'm looking at is this shadow right here with the box i kind of want to have that like contrast with the background uh, and then generally speaking when it comes to lights in unreal engine directional lights the intensity is super duper high so i believe the most quote unquote photorealistic how unreal converts that is going to be 3.16 so we'll bring that down and that looks significantly better definitely still very contrasty and very dark so we're next we're going to add a skylight now there's a thousand ways to skin a cat with a skylight and when it comes to skylights i like using a movable skylight and then setting the sky distance threshold to one if you are interested check out william foucher's youtube video on skylights he has a full description on why you should do that i'm just going to set that to one and let that go from there next i want to add a sky atmosphere and then i'm also going to look up a HDRI backdrop drop this in and it's going to take a second to load and I'm gonna set this to like negative 20,000 and the reason why I'm moving it down is so that this bottom doesn't clip and now I'm also going to increase the size of that to let's say 15,000 and now we have a sort of HDRI backdrop thing that we can add Next, I want to add a, if we go through our lighting panel, we have our skylight, we have our, all that stuff. We want to add a exponential height fog. That's going to add some atmosphere to the scene. Nothing too crazy. We can add more fog if we want to or take away. And then we are going to add a post process volume now this is where you're going to get most of your effects so before we go any further what i want to do is i have this folder of lights in my scene i'm going to just start dragging stuff so sky and fog lights go in there lights go in there sky atmosphere do do see is there anything else that needs to go in there that's not affecting anything all right so we have our post process volume this is where you're going to get most of your fun lighting effects with the scene so right now it looks a little overexposed it looks really blown out first what i want to do is i'm, I'm going to actually make it worse uh, i'm going to add some bloom and we can see that the overexposed elements of the scene are really starting to bloom but i just think that helps give it a nice look and that's just the first thing that you see in the scene 
but we still need to go through and change our exposure now generally speaking when it comes to rendering in unreal it will try and expose for some level of dynamic range don't let unreal decide that you decide that because you're the master so you could either set it to auto exposure basic and then go into your min and max and set this to somewhere between negative one and one let's just start with zero and zero that doesn't look too bad and then you can dial in your exposure compensation there or what you could do is you could also go to manual and then crank this up to like 10. Now, I'm gonna just keep it on an auto exposure basic. You would use manual for some other things, but we're not gonna talk about that today. Let's scroll down and we're going to go into lens flares, intensity, focus size, and we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger because we're getting that lens flare from, I believe that's the HDRI backdrop. Yes, that is. And what we can do is we can actually rotate this a little bit. So I know that the HDRI backdrop, even though that's all the way down there, the sun, our directional light is coming from over here, hence that shadow right there. That just makes sense. So what I wanna do is I wanna rotate this, I believe that would be on the Y. And sometimes if you crank a value in Unreal and just use the slider, it will be a little funny funky so 50 nope not that 50 50 aha yes we want to use the z the yaw and i just want to turn this around about 180 degrees and the reason why is now that light that sun should be closer over there cool now what we want to do is we want to go back into our post-process volume and then I am going to add some global illumination. Now GI is basically bounce light, uh, is light in your scene that is hitting an object and then just bouncing up and filling in the shadow. So if we turn that off, we can see it darkens up in some areas, turn it on. Now, Lumen is the new Unreal 5 software that I wanted to test with this, and I think that looks pretty good. You could also go to ray tracing because the ray tracing is the fun part in Unreal and set this to brute force, and it's gonna give you a little bit different bounce light, really thousand ways it's gonna cat. Biggest thing I can recommend when it comes to Unreal is if it looks good, it looks good. Um, and if you're not doing a sort of real-time experience where players have to play with this, I'll just end up using ray tracing and add more samples when I uh, go to my final render. But let's just stick this back to Lumen for now because it looks pretty good and it makes it a little bit easier to optimize with our scene. We can navigate around a little bit more. Scrolling down, I want to turn on some reflections, and the most reflections we'll see are going to be inside these, uh, the the water here. So we can either set this to ray tracing, and start adding some boxes. I'll typically set this to area shadows as my starting point, and then I will make sure I click on include translucent objects else we need to deal with there and then we'll scroll down to translucency type and I will set this to ray tracing and it's going to dramatically change the look of the scene and we can see here that our ray tracing is adding a lot of bounce and we'll set this to area shadows so when it comes to ray tracing translucency I'll just check on all the boxes turn on area shadows turn on refraction we can see it's affecting our stuff over there now because this is a board game project what I am focusing on with a lot of the camera moves is the box and the hero shot and the uh, the look of the product on the table so realistically we only need to see the background and because we're working from this shot we can light for this I'll generally start by lighting my entire scene as a whole and then come in to um, this now I did realize I did forget one little thing when it comes to my post-process volume if I move out it looks weird but if I move in what's happening here so if I hit G on my keyboard I see this bounding box here what that's doing that's basically saying 
within this box apply all of these post effects that we've been doing and when we're outside of it then we will not uh, see all those post effects so what we're going to do is with the post process volume selected we'll type unb and then we'll click infinite extend unbound and now we're getting the look of the post process volume throughout the entire scene so now we can go in and dial in a few more settings and then we can wrap up this video so we can see what the bloom is doing bloom is a really fun effect that i generally like to add and keeping it on on convolution generally looks the best you could keep it on standard again it comes down to what do you think looks best exposure you can change your compensation there focus size don't need to worry about that scrolling down set this back to ray tracing back on brute force we'll give that two two bounces and maybe eight samples and we're still it's not quite real time anymore but this is still looking pretty good now i do believe that in my opinion sometimes when you're working with an unreal scene using older systems rasterization effects actually ends up looking better so i'll just go back to my reflections and uh, translucency and actually change a few things i personally think that the translucency is ruining our scene i feel like it's not really giving us the, the fog and the atmosphere and that's something that you kind of have to pick and choose what what do you want to see more of so i'm actually going to set this back to raster translucency and then i'm going to add a few more things i'm going to make sure i turn on my ray tracing ambient occlusion and i can crank this up and down i can see how it's affecting the trees over there in the background And if I want to see that ambient occlusion directly, I can actually go to my uh, view mode up here, buffer, visualiza visual buffer visualization and then ambient occlusion, and then I can start cranking this dial and see what's actually happening. Now, if I bring it down to a very low number, it's gonna sort of brighten it up or if I bring it to a higher number, it'll darken it down. Now, when it comes to rendering, I generally like to render with motion blur. It makes things feel more cinematic. So I'll generally export in 24 frames. So set this to 24. And then from here, I can go in and actually look at my main camera and design based on that. Now, if this is the shot I was going for, I would hit G to hide some of my other stuff, bring up my content drawer and dock in layout. So then I can see what's happening bring that down bring my content drawer to the very bottom boop boop there we go and let's just reposition my camera just a little bit to see the box the game etc Now I'm going to go into my camera and I'm going to type hero shot and I'm going to find my focus and I'm going to pick the box there and I can see that we're getting some weird shadow effects with the background but I'm not too concerned about that for this video right now I, we just want to focus on post-process volume stuff and the last thing I want to do is I want to go into my directional light and just play with the intensity just a little bit. I'm going to bring this down because what I want to do for a uh, sort of cinematic effect, I'm actually going to add a spotlight. And the reason why I'm adding the spotlight is I want to add a little bit of extra sort of help contrast with that scene. I'll hit G again to actually show that spotlight and I'll just position this to be affecting the scene without exposing, overexposing anything else. And I'm just gonna 
set this to movable make sure you set your lights to movable if you want them to be in quote unquote real time i'm going to actually increase my source radius and my soft source radius and the reason why i'm doing that is I, it's going to soften up that shadow so uh, spotlight if I turn that off, turn that on, it's help, br help brightening up the scene a little bit, and then it is hel helping the background sort of be further away. On top of that, what I could also do is I could go into my directional light, and I can change the soft source angle and the volumetric indirect light intensity, and that's gonna help fill in those shadows there. This comes down to what do you think ends up looking best? And then last thing I want to do is go into my skylight, recapture, and yeah, I feel like that looks pretty good. It looks a little bit dark and gloomy because I recaptured that skylight. So I'm actually gonna go into that spotlight, drag it into my lights folder, this down to four so it sort of balances out it's not quite as contrasty and then in my post-process volume go down to my exposure compensation wherever that is and i'm just gonna crank that up just a touch 1.5 so that we're getting a good looking contrasty sort of scene so from here this is kind of where i would have my starting point when it comes to lighting in unreal again there's a thousand ways to skin a cat and what i found with unreal through countless tutorials is what you see is what you get and from here you could render this out and get some beautiful imagery now if i were to go back and do anything else i actually do want to add a little bit of extra fog Make that a little bit denser. Turn off the one. There we go. That looks super cool. That looks atmospheric. That's fun. So that's it. That's the tutorial. That is how I would start lighting a scene in Unreal. Then it just comes down to hitting the render button, which we'll talk about in another video. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!